Hey everybody, so I wanted to do a quick explainer, or as I'll call it, an unexplainer, I don't have an explanation for this, about the Sigillum Dei Ameth. Now, I've recently done a video about how to make it, I'll go ahead and put a link in the description. I don't do in-video links, I probably should, I'd probably, you know, <laughs> be way more, uh, I, it would probably be a lot easier for you, but what can I say? I'm, I'm a human being, and I, you can find it if you can find my video, okay? So, the thing I wanted to talk about, though, was something that has to do with the Outer Ring. So, the Outer Ring is how these various names, perhaps divine names, perhaps angelic names, are derived from this Outer Ring of letters and numbers that the Outer Ring is composed of, basically. So, and it has to do with a relatively straightforward system uh, to, to find certain names within the, the seal of God, okay? Now, what does that look like? Well, I've already drawn it out for you. You know me, I like to draw stuff out. Um, if I had more time, I would probably learn how to edit stuff like that and, and get stuff going live on screen. But, but this is enough, right? You know, you, you get, you get the teacher you get, you know, so, so let's look at it. So here I've sort of reproduced, it's a little bit cleaner here on the next page, but here I've reproduced the outer ring of letters and you can see here, it starts with a four T, you know, the four over the T cell, and then a six omega cell right here. Now, what is this? You know, what is this? What are all these lines and stuff like that? Well, if you notice here, these are basically arrows. So the four T cell, basically, it says that if there's a number on top, you're supposed to proceed from this letter and proceed in a clockwise fashion. But if the number's on the bottom, you're supposed to go in counterclockwise fashion, okay? So here, just really quickly, I'll point out the name Galas. So it's G with the nine over top. So you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The A with the six over it. So it's a six, I go six more. L, G, A, L. And the, here it's the L, you can't see it, but L is on top and eight is on the bottom. So I go back six plus two is eight. So there's another A, G, A, L, A. So let's go over 20. And I think this letter A, hang on, hang on. Ooh. I like it when I do this in the audio version, by the way, the, the, the captions, it picks it up as music, right? <laughs> so anyway, G, A, L, A, and then I go over eight and it leads to, let me see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what that produces is the name Galas. And interestingly, I just want to point this out really quickly, in case you get confused as I did, the angels treat this number five as either the number five or the letter S. So <laughs> I don't know why, but that's why I'm pointing that out here. In case you're wondering, how does this outer ring add up to 441? 441 is important in Enochian, but suffice it to say that the Michael says, okay, you got to take all these numbers, add them up, and you get 440, and then you're supposed to add one. Now, that only works if this is the, this cell right here contains the number five, but this name only works if that's an S, so I, apparently they're treating that interchangeably here. Now, I have the, that part slashed out, and I've shown you, basically, that you get all the five names, so you get Galas, Feoth, uh, let's see, Hang on, Githog, Horlin, Inon, Eoth, Galithog, okay? And I'll have to, <laughs> I'm kicking myself because I'm gonna have to redo all of the captions on that. It's another extra step. Uh, and by the way, also, this will come up later in a second, but this double A, the fact that there's a capital A in this, so if you go um, T, H, and then all the way out, you come to, let's see, which letter A is this? You go to, it's one of the inner ones, you can go to number 11 here, okay? Theoth. So, and uh, that, that is, that's a capital letter A, so there's actually also Aoth in addition to Theoth. And the Archangel Michael here, he says, change that to just a single A. 
and you know that's how you get that name so these are basically divine names or angelic names it's not really clear um now you know maybe there's a case to be made hey you know we're all divine and angels is two are two so however you want to put that right usually when i think of the divine i think of like the entire divinity okay so so all that's interesting right and you get seven names because the enochian is very big about the number seven but what's interesting is if you look at this and i thought you know foolishly you know when i discovered this i thought i can't believe you know you know i, I couldn't find anybody else until i looked into it and, but when i first discovered it, it was like why are there these extra letters on the sigil so what do i mean by that well I'm going to flip this around now, so bear with me. And I'm also going to fold it over so you don't see these extra names on the back so you don't get confused. But, okay, so I've done this extra work here, right? And the extra work is basically I've lightly crossed out these letters and numbers, these cells, if the letter was used. And I've done the extra special job of circling for you. <laughs> I know, it was such hard work, right? Uh these letters, these cells in particular that were not used. So, and there are seven of them, right? So that's kind of a big deal. That says to me that not only are is this important in Enochian overall, but also that it's almost like a confirmation that these letters themselves are important and holy, right? So, we have so many seven letter names. We have seven letter names to the heptarchical kings, princes, governors, and ministers. We have seven letter named zodiacal kings. We have, uh, you know, the eight, seven names of God on the other side, or at least seven possibly great angel names. It's not clear. It's interpreted differently by different authors, and I haven't, I haven't done the digging into it. Okay, but suffice it to say that there's all of that. And then there are seven letter, seven sons of light, seven sons of sons of light, seven daughters of light, seven daughters of daughters of light. So this number seven keeps coming up. And so many tables that are produced with Enochian are seven by seven, from which everything else is derived and 343 is a big number, etc. Okie doke. So, so that is very, that's very confirmatory to me. And why am I making such a big deal about this? Because what comes out of this, these seven letters, seems really weird. And it does not seem like it belongs in Enochian. And I'll get into why in a second. But first I want to give a shout out to, I think I, I earlier in 2019 when I was first looking at this, maybe 2020, I found this person's name and ident identified them at the time as somebody named Scott Wilde. Regardless, if I, I may not have that name correct anymore, but their blog title is A-S-I-C-A-T-H dot livejournal dot com. And so you can do the deeper digging into this. So this is a little bit of an add-on. <laughs> this is a... This is a video, it's, it, I think I'm going to label this just a little cheekily. I'm going to call this Independent Study Enochian 150, right? Instead of, you know, like the 100 level classes. This is a little extra, right? So the letters that come out are kind of interesting. And I took a very systematic approach when, in order to discover this and make sure I didn't miss anything. And along the way, I made a mistake. And I'll show you what the mistake is first, because, hey, get that out of the way. You know, I'm a human being. We all make mistakes. So the first mistake I did was uh, this Enochian letter, or this letter I, I should say, I mistook this for an L, and I got the same name of Inon, which is right here. You can derive it exactly from that same process I showed you. So I, for whatever reason, I thought this was a letter L, and I thought it was an additional name, and I don't know how I make, made that mistake, probably because I was going through a lot just massive downloads at the time, you know, and I wasn't, you know, well, there was a lot to capacitate and we're going to make mistakes and we're human. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Now the process usually is now I mentioned before you started a letter, you go backwards, you go forwards, but what about these unused letters? How do I know where to start? That is the question. How to derive a name 
And are these, these seven letters, the first letter? Which one of them is the first letter? Now, if you go along the outside here, you can tell pretty easily that Theoth, it starts with a capital T, and the G, the Gala starts with a capital G, and so on and so forth. These major names that the angels identify all start with capital letters. But the, none of these letters are capitalized. And you wouldn't know that from the O, but you'll just have to take my word for it. Okay? So, I, that left me at a loss, right? How do I derive a name? Are these the first letters? How do I tell? So, I didn't circle that, but you get the idea. Are, which one of these is the first letter is what I was trying to write, and how do I tell? So, what I have here, I show this to you. You see, notice these letters that I've added to the outside of the outer ring, as well as to those in the inside. Let's say I wanted to start with this letter, 6M, right? How would I get there? So if there were, in other words, my question is, if this is like in the middle of a word, that means that this letter M, if this were in the middle of a new name, then that means that I would have to arrive here from some other number, right? So that means is, right, like if I got here from, just ignoring for the fact which one is on top or bottom, it doesn't matter, right? If I see the number one in this cell, then immediately I wonder, okay, is it on the top or bottom? Because I know I can get to this letter M from this adjacent cell. And if it's two cells over, I would look for the number two. And yes, you can go through the whole process of going through the entire ring. There's only 40 of these, right? So you exhaust everything by just doing a very brute force process and by elimination saying, okay, this letter would not take, this cell would not take me to this cell because this one has number 22, I'd go 22 away. So I'm not getting to this cell directly from here and so on and so forth. This, this cell won't get me because it has number 14. That won't make me land at this one because it's only three away and so on and so forth. So I did that. Uh, and this just shows you that if you follow a process that by definition has to lead you somewhere, you're going to find a lot of answers, right? Unless the problem is too big. And that's what I discovered with the, the subset sum problem, but that's a whole other, in the, in the Enochian evidence, evidence of Enochian transmission or whatever, that's what I call that. So what I'm showing you, ignore the inner ring, just, let's just stay at the outer ring. What I've done here is just show you, okay, how many cells would I go from in this direction or in this direction, right? So it could be like, let's say I get out to here and I get to number, to this one, it could be that I have to go 10 this way or 30 in this direction. So I'm just showing you that if you sh if you include both of those numbers, then either one counterclockwise or 39 clockwise. Now it turns out you don't need to go that far because the largest number away, I just know this from having looked at each of these cells, <laughs> is, is 30. 30 is the largest number. So I crossed out here that anything that is greater than 30 in these upper numbers. So I don't have one less thing to check, right? So I say, so how did I go about this? Just to review, I went to this cell and I said, is it the number one? No. Two, is this cell, does this have a two in it? No. Three, no, so on. And then when I got to this one, <laughs> I had to ask, is the number 30 or the number 10 in it? No. 29? No. 13? No. And so on and so on until, ding, 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 I got to 15. Aha! So 15 means that in order to get to this cell here, I would have, I could start from here. And is it the right direction? Well, remember that if the, the four is on, if the number is on top, then I would go clockwise, but behold and lo, Lo and behold, <laughs> the 15 is at the bottom, which means I go counterclockwise and I get to here. And it turns out that if you repeat this whole process, then that actually, there is no other number, no other cell that sort of got skipped over that causes you to arrive at this cell, the Y15 cell. And in particular, this cell is notorious because 
John D wrote this down as a Y14 cell, and it's supposed to be Y15. Okay, what can I tell you? And Michael actually corrects him in the diaries, but John D never updated his diagram <laughs> to say Y15. So that's why you read, and that's why you're grateful for other people who have read before you. Now, okay, so I did all of that, right? I did all of that. I did all this work. I did this work and it turns out somebody else had done this work. So I, if I should have just relied on their work, but regardless, you know, I'm going to explain what these numbers are in a second, but basically I found two new names and I just basically repeated what somebody else had done independently of me. I didn't, I wasn't aware of them, which also explains why I messed up and had the extra name here, you know, because if I were more thorough, I would have checked their thing first and then realized, oh, duh. So I got two names. I got Iman and I got Bara oath or bo excuse me bora oath okay now what are these numbers here well i just showed you the y15 i made a big deal and it turns out that if you were adding up the numbers as they appear in this diagram the 15 here the six that i just showed you here okay and then the 18 here and then the n for the o and then the n is the last letter if you do this whole process that's an exercise i leave to you now, you get you add them all up, you get the number 39. Okay, well, what's a big deal? Yeah, that's not really an important number. But if you add up the numbers here, 10, 17, etc., do that same work for this, this other name that, again, if you follow that same process, it's exhaustive, it takes a little time, but you get to the end. If you add up all of those numbers, uh, and by the way, I'll get to this A, well, let me just address this capital letter A. Remember how here, the that Michael said, okay, you've got two A's here and one of them's capital, drop that capital one and you get this one. The argument can be made that you're also supposed to drop that letter, this capital letter A, for the same reason, because it's not at the beginning of the name, okay? So you have all of these different values that are associated with that. And if you start with the letter, let me find it here, B, 10, 10. You get to number 017, 17, and so on. If you add all of those up, you get to the number 72. You add those two together, you get the name 111. Now, if you're a fan of angel numbers, a lot of times an angel number is just a re repetition of a single digit within a number. But 111 actually has much more importance. So we think about God as being unified, right? There's... Uh, hero, hero Israel, the Lord, thy God, the Lord is one. Shema Yisrael, Eloah, Eloheinu, um, is, I think it's part of that. It's, it's somewhere in that, that call to prayer. And then there's also in the Quran where there's, the, and I've, I, I'm gonna not remember this, but you can look through the comments in my previous videos. I only have so many videos at this point. <laughs> where so, one of the commenters was gracious enough to tell me that about the the passage in the Quran that is basically I think it, it has a reputation of being equivalent to like one third of the entire Quran it's so important but it talks about how Allah his no his permutation is one it talks about the oneness okay the unity the the singularity that is God right so okay so regardless of what tradition you're coming from religiously uh, why am I making such a big deal about the 111? Because that's that's a different number, let's be honest. So it turns out that in Hebrew, the letter uh, Aleph in their, in their numerology, it's known as gematria. I'll go ahead and write that down in case you don't know. Gematria, that's the name of their num the, the Kabbalistic numerological system. Okay, just to be very specific. I don't want to say it's Judaism. Well, it's a particular idea within Judaism, okay? Now, you do have to be careful with numbers, because let's face it, all numbers are divine. So just be aware of that. And they can take you down a different road. And it can be very easy to oversimplify. So I'm saying this because there's a member of my family who actually uh, blew up her whole life as a result of somebody suggesting that a certain number in the certain Bible was very important to her, okay? And that that meant that she had to change her whole life, okay? And it was very hurtful. So regardless, and, and this is why 
this is one of the reasons why I'm, I'm both interested and intrigued by stuff you can learn from spirituality. But there have been times in which I've probably gone a little too far. So don't be like that. Don't be like this member of my family. Um, really try to, to ground whatever insight it, you have into something, into the deepest wisdom you can, or the highest wisdom, whichever way you prefer to look at it. And what you'll discover is that as long as you are being true to, to truly loving yourself, loving each other, other people, all other people, and Buddhism would say all sentient beings, and to loving the divine, you won't really, there's not really a way you're going to go wrong with that, okay? So I'm just throwing out that caution now just because it's hard, and, you know, I'm not, I'm not an expert in this stuff. I'm just somebody who ha has tried to seek and tried my best to be, to acknowledge that I couldn't, can be wrong while at the same time trying to seek and pursue what is right. Cause you can kind of go down too far, like, okay, I can be wrong and I'm just wrong about everything and everything's wrong. And I'm just, I'm just going to be nihilistic as a result. That's not healthy either. Okay. Commentary over. <laughs>